What size should your quilt be? When we start a quilt, we often forget that detail as we get caught up in the pattern and the fabrics. But ultimately, most quilts will be functional and cover a bed or a loved one. So it's important to get the size right. And that's what this video is all about. And stay to the end for a free handout. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you want to make. And if you like what you see, please click that subscribe button. There are many ways that trigger a quilt. Sometimes we see a great design. Sometimes it's a pattern we see online. Sometimes it's a need for a gift. But ultimately, all quilts lead to covering the special people in our lives with warmth and love and the majority of them end up on a bed. So it's important to get the size right for them to enjoy it. You may think that it just is what it is, but it's those edges of the quilt that you see first as you walk into a bedroom. Size matters, and it's best to know the bed size that the quilt will lie on before you start. In doing the research for this video, I found no less than 36 commercially available mattress sizes. There is the standard single, which is sometimes called a twin, and the double, which is sometimes called a full, plus the queen and the king. And there are different standard sizes for the US, the UK, and Europe. And if you live outside one of those regions, you might find several standard sizes in your country. But there's also different sizes based on purpose. Is it going to be used in an RV, a pickup, or a waterbed? And there are the extra long sizes. If your teenager is going off to college, chances are they'll be sleeping on an extra long single bed. I found no less than 10 sizes of king mattresses with the biggest bed size commercially available, the Alaskan King at a whopping 108 inches by 108 inches. So with all these variations, you want to know the height and the width of the mattress before you start. Some quilts will lie on top of the mattress. Some will drop down and cover the sides of the mattress. Some will tuck in and some will hang down to the floor like a bedspread. This is a personal choice, so I would ask the recipient what they prefer. To get the proper drape, you need to know how thick the mattress is. And there's a huge variation in the thickness of the mattress, from a four inch foam to the thick coil with toppers at 10 inches plus. Once you know the thickness, then add the drape length to the height measurement of the mattress, and then twice the drape to the width measurement. Pillows normally sit on top of a quilt, so we don't normally add any drape to the top. But again, this is a personal preference. Your person might want to cover their pillows. So ask first and make the adjustment if necessary. So you know the measurements that you want and you have the pattern with its measurements. The next step is to see how they align. The funny thing about quilts is we judge them like this, but they are used like this. And that often means that the center of your quilt doesn't align with the center of your mattress. And the edges of the mattress can cut design motifs. So before you invest all these hours in making a quilt, take a moment to map it out. You can make a rough sketch, or use graph paper, but you can also do this on your computer if you prefer. Draw out the mattress size, then add the drape. And just note that pillows will cover about 20 inches as well. Then mark where you want the center of the quilt to be. Then take your pattern and mark out the finished measurements of the quilt. It's pretty rare that they line up perfectly. If the size of the pattern is one to four inches larger than the quilt size you want, I would do nothing more. But it's more than likely that you might need to make some adjustments, which we'll cover in the next step. 
are three main ways of making a quilt top bigger before it's quilted. You will need to give some thought to this as it is the edges of the quilt that you see first as you walk into a bedroom. The first is to add a border. Borders do not need to be equal in size, nor do they need to be on all sides. You can add borders with a pattern or keep it plain. You can extend the block design to the edges making half blocks or quarters. And if you have sashing in your pattern, you can increase the width of that sashing. An additional half inch over eight rows adds four inches to the quilt dimensions. You can also add sashing to a pattern that has no sashing, but note that this will change the overall design and the overall pattern. If you need to make it smaller, you can do the opposite of these three steps removing or shortening borders, trimming blocks, and reducing or removing sashing. It is definitely more difficult to make changes to the size of a quilt after it's quilted, but it's better to make a quilt useful than have it sitting in a closet undervalued. Or perhaps the recipient has grown or moved to another bed size. You can add borders or blocks with a quilt as you go method. If the quilt has been previously washed, be sure that you only use pre-washed fabrics and pre-wash your batting. Remove the binding if necessary, then sew the additional quilt top and backing to the edge of your quilt. Then attach a strip of batting with a zigzag or a running stitch. Fold the extra quilt top and backing back over the batting using pins or an adhesive to secure, then quilt as desired and then reattach the binding. If your quilt is too big, you can first try washing it. From my video on shrinkage, you can expect unwashed fabrics and batting to shrink up to 12% and pre-washed fabrics an additional 2%. And if your quilt is large, that might be all you need to do. I made the mistake of making this quilt too big a bedspread size. The drape was too long. It covered the drawers in the base, and honestly, we just kept tripping over it. So I took it to the laundromat, found the biggest machine I could, and washed it. This was the size before the wash, and this is the size after it dried. And I found I lost five inches in size in both directions. The other alternative is to remove the binding, trim equally from both edges, and then reattach the binding. This might be fairly painful to do, watching all your hard work get cut off, but remember that you want the quilt to be useful and cherished. I have made a chart of all the different mattress sizes and what size the quilt should be based on the different drapes, which you can download from my website at Quilts slash quilt sizes, or from the link below in the notes. Not every quilt goes on a bed. Some are made for snuggling on a couch or in a car. If you would like me to do a video on those quilt sizes, let me know in the comments below. Take care and I'll see you next time.